Hey guys, it's M4J here and welcome back to the M4J Network here on OpenTTD. Last time out we did boats and buses, which is all very fine and very good. However, I was suffering withdrawal symptoms from rail uh, towards the end of that video, so I thought why not head back to the good old metal tracks and uh, do some railway stuff today. But, we're not going to be doing anything from the 21st century. Oh no, actually technically this whole thing isn't set in the 21st century anyway. We're not going to do anything from the latter half of the uh, 20th century. Instead, we are going to uh, work on some heritage railways today. Um, I'm just trying to find the right narrow gauge. I think it's this one. Let me just check that. Yeah, that looks the same. So this is the Blue Lagoon Railway. This was suggested many, many years ago now. Uh, I can't remember who suggested it. That's really unprofessional. But yeah, somebody suggested it in the comments about two years ago, maybe. Um, i got to stop scratching my beard in front of the microphone because that's not going to sound very good, is it? Um, I think it was suggested about two years ago. I can't remember who by. I do apologize. If you are still around, let me know uh, and I'll give you the appropriate credit. But basically, um, I liked the... Oh, God, I've shut down the wrong thing. I liked the idea of the railway. And I wanted to build it. And so far, it runs between St. Halter and Condhead. This is Condhead. St. Halter is up there somewhere and links up with the North Valley's line. Um, there was always this provision here for an extension. And it never got built until today. Because I have planned out the second half of the Blue Lagoon. And we are going to go through and add it in uh, today. We're going to complete the line. And then we're going to turn into a time lapse. Um which can be quite painful. Do hold on to your belongings and loved ones because the transition can, you know, cause some complications. Can I not build level crossings? Oh, I can't build level crossings with this rail type. That's really annoying. Okay, hang on. That's fine. I didn't want to build a level crossing there anyway. I'm in one of those moods today, by the way, where I'm going to say jokes that really aren't funny, but you're going to laugh anyway because you're polite. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna build some um, some heritage railways today. So we got this one first, and then we're gonna head over towards the south of the map and the east of the map, and we're gonna build two more that I've planned out. The idea is to have some more dotted around. One of the problems I discovered actually with planning all of this out is there are lots and lots of big cities in the game now, and very few small towns where it's appropriate shall we say to have a heritage railway running and that's not to say that heritage railways don't run between big towns because here in the uk um we have uh the grand uh, grand central no the great central that runs to leicester it doesn't run into leicester really it runs to like a suburb of leicester but i think that still counts if you ask me that still counts we also have um the east lanks railway which runs to is it Berry Bolton Street or Bolton Berry? No, it's Berry Bolton Street, isn't it? Which again isn't a massive city, but it is a big town. Berry is quite a big town. We also have, uh, I mean, the West Somerset Railway runs to Minehead, and Minehead's a pretty big tourist town, so that kind of counts. And there are others smattered all over the place. Um, so I think it's it's not beyond the realms of uh, of reality, and partially uh, what we're doing here with some of these routes today will reflect that. Um, but yeah, mostly, so like this route, for example, here's Condhead, Condhead Heights. It's going to come out this way, round through Denfing Bridge, through Slardingbury, uh, up and over the hill here, and then a really long route down to Cartbourne, and then across the lake here, uh, through Butt Hill. I hate that name. I can't change it really now, though. Through Butt Hill, through Gee Hill, Gee Hill, Gee Hill, Gee Hill, Gee Hill, I don't know. And it'll climb up to a relative height here through the, the hill and then it will come round and it will terminate down here at Lenpool Falls, uh, Lenningpool Falls, sorry, uh, with in some platforms that are parallel to the west coast. That's the plan. And the services that currently operate on the route will be extended east. That is what's going to happen here. So let's get on with this route and then we'll add the stations. We'll do some signaling. It's not going to be double track all the way, by the way. It's just going to be double track up until the end of this station here. And then it'll go back to single track again. Um, just again for, for, for realism purposes, really. Uh, I wanted to have the central bit be double track for operations, especially as we've got, whoops, 
lots of trains coming in and out of the depot and things like that. And every heritage line has a base of operations. And this one just happens to be Condhead. So I thought that would make a lot of sense. Um, and then I'll introduce you to the other plans as and when the time is right. Am I able to... I suppose if I do this, I might be able to get this across. I do kind of want a bridge here because I think Condhead, the town, is actually going to extend still. I think that... Oh, actually, hang on. We can go one more. Uh, so while I'm recording this, I am going to talk a little bit about my thoughts right now on the heritage movement because obviously last year was a non-starter for most heritage railways some did manage to get some operations in which i thought uh, was good um most are struggling though which is the sad thing there are a lot of uh, of heritage routes that are struggling some were struggling before the pandemic as well um and the, here here lies my problem so with the, the Manchester Metrolink network, there are plans to extend in various different directions, one of which will use the East Lanks Railway, um, which to most people sounds great because you think, oh, great, it's a, it's an old heritage route that's being brought back into to usefulness. I'm not one of those people. I'm one of those people that thinks, first of all, these trams will not be using electricity at this point. They'll run on batteries. So you don't have to worry about... Uh, overhead wires ruining the the vibe of you know steam locomotives or diesel locomotives running backwards and forwards and then there's these wires hanging above them that's not the issue here that bit's fine it's more the fact that whatever the service frequency for the trams it's going to take priority over the the trains and that to me is the bit that i'm not a huge fan of because that to me just doesn't sound right it should be the other way around still. And I, well, really, it should be neither way around because it's never, this kind of thing has never really happened before. But on, on the main line, sure, heritage trains yield. But this isn't the main line. This is a heritage route. This is the government back in the 60s decided they wanted to close down a whole heap of routes. And preservationists came in and did all the hard work to keep these routes alive. And then 60 years later, the government comes back in and says, thank you very much for all your hard work. We'll take it from here. And then that's it. Like suddenly it's a, a railway again or, you know, a major, th major route. And I, I'm explaining this really badly because I'm trying to talk and build at the same time. And we all know how that goes. But basically, I don't think it's a very good idea. I think it's like taking someone else's hard work and then trying to pass it off as your own. And maybe some of these preservationists are happy with the idea of the route being brought back into daily use. If that's the case, that's fine. But... I would be more than a little bit miffed myself if I'd put blood, sweat and tears into working for these railways for free. Don't forget, it's all voluntary most of the time. There are sometimes paid paid positions, but it's mostly voluntary. Uh, and then for someone else just to come in and go, yeah, thanks for all your hard work looking after this railway for us, blah, blah, blah. We'll take over from here and we're going to do things very, very differently. And it'll be like, you never worked for us. Um, that's the bit that I take exception to. And I just don't like it. And I know some people are going to comment below saying that, you know, it's providing a valuable service to communities and things like that. And yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. It will. But I mean, I, I don't really have a strong counter argument to that other than, again, it's taking someone else's hard work and, and making it as though they never did anything. I'm not a huge fan. Let's just put it that way. I'm not a huge fan. I think the actual project will be successful. I think... You know, the trams will be heavily used, especially in and out of Bury. Uh, I think Bury is one of the last big towns in Greater Manchester that isn't served by the trams. I think I've got that right. Because uh, I know Rochdale is, Oldham is. I mean, Stockport Stockport isn't in Greater Manchester, though, is it? I think it's just in... Mm, I don't know. But then Stockport's got good rail links anyway, so that's by the by. But yeah, I, I just... I, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I'm just not a fan. I just don't think it's a very good idea. Um... But we'll see. If it does happen, first of all, we'll see about that. And then if it does happen, we'll see how well it works. I mean, it's, as I said, it should work. It should be a success. I just feel a little bit for the preservationists. Maybe they don't need me to feel for them. If that's the case, again, so be it. But I do feel a little bit bad for these people. Uh, the heritage movement especially, they do so much good work. Not just for themselves, but also for local communities and things like that. And I do find it a shame. Uh, that sometimes their hard work is overlooked and it's not you know this isn't the only example there are other examples of heritage routes that are being 
closed down, taken over, um, you know, made to, to give up the hard work they've done. Uh, plus the fact that they've had to thread needles the whole way through the rebuilding process. Again, I don't think this applies to the East Lanks, but for example, um, the Great Central, they couldn't go back to Leicester proper because it doesn't exist anymore. It's been built over where the station used to be. So that's why Leicester North exists. And actually, if you look just down the line from Leicester North, there is another station uh, that where the bridge is, and that one wasn't deemed suitable enough. So they had to build an entire new station from scratch, which is no mean feat. Uh, and that was back in the, I want to say the 90s, but I think it might have actually been the early noughties. And then, again, imagine that they'd finished building that project. Some people might have uh, taken great financial risk in order to get that project complete. And then um, Department of Transport just comes in and says, thank you very much for your hard work. Uh, we'll take over this now. That's that's basically what it feels like. That is basically what it feels like. And I just think that's it's not cool. It's not cool. But I'm very biased. I'm not a huge fan of the DFT right now. I think they're doing a lot of things very strangely. I'm also not a huge fan of these protests that are going on in London at the moment about uh, against High Speed 2. Cause aren't they, I can't remember if, if it said they've dug their own tunnels or if they're using the access tunnels for Euston. Either way, it's an incredibly stupid thing to do. Very, very unsafe. Not exactly setting good examples. Um, asking for trouble basically asking for trouble and to what end i don't i don't actually get what they're trying to prove also these people have come from all over the country how did they get to euston in the first place if they're so anti rail did they fly either on a plane or for real some of them probably think they can fly that's the sad thing anyway enough of that I'm not going to whittle on all day about that sort of thing. It just, it, it beggars belief. It really does. But yeah, let me know what you think down below about the uh, the plans for um, trams taking over Heritage Railways. Do you think it's a good idea or not? I know some people are for it. And again, I'm not against the idea of the tram network expanding. I should make that clear. I think that's a good idea. I like the fact that not just public transit, but rapid transit is, is spreading its uh, its wings again around the country as a whole. I think that's really cool. Um, hopefully it inspires more cities to have a look at their rail infrastructure. Manchester was one of the worst offenders in that area and they are now starting to fix things. I was mentioning this on the um, Discord again recently though. The Castlefield solution or whatever it's called, whatever that project's called. Um, it's a great solution and it would have been perfect to coincide with the Ordsall cord and they didn't do it for some reason. And now they've got... Uh, what I don't like is the way that um, Transport for the North, Transport for Manchester, whatever they're called, and the DFT and, and Network Rail and who else is involved, they're painting this project like it's the saviour. Like they're they're swooping in and saving the day. But I just look at it and think, you caused this. Like you, you messed up the project originally. You're not saving anything here. You're just fixing your own mistake. That That's a big difference in my opinion. Um, and again, some of you might disagree. That's absolutely fine, but that's that's my two cents. Uh, I don't, I just don't like the terminology they use, and they they try and like really ham it up, like this will do this, this, and this. And I think, yeah, I would have done it, you know, six years ago as well, if you built it then. Like, there's there's nothing about it now that couldn't have been done back then. The only difference is back then it would have been called future proofing, and now it's called retconning, effectively. Again, I'm not a fan of the DFT right now or any department of transport anywhere in the country because it's all too little too late in many respects. Should I make this quite a... No, it's not quite. Mm, that made me... I think that's too... I mean, that's not bad. I might change this one up here. Oh, I don't know, actually. They're far enough apart. Just another spectacular looking bridge here built across the uh, the way. Um, also just looking. This station here. No, I think they both I think they all have to be double track round here really. One of these is gonna be single track and I think it's gonna be Butt Hill. Uh, I hate that name, it's such a bad name. Oh dear. I think 
I'm not saying it anymore. I think B Hill is going to be a uh, single track. And then uh, Gee Hill is going to be double track. I might even rename this town B Hill or Bew Hill. Take out the T. So the map might need to be changed and the station listing might need to be changed. But then, um, you know, I'll, I'll at least be able to say the name of the town. So that, that makes a difference. Cool. Right. As I said, though, people might disagree with my opinions on these things. That's fine. You know, there's no right or wrong in this scenario. Um, you can try and justify it. I'm not particularly... And this might sound a bit small-minded. I'm not particularly interested in hearing people's justifications for these things. Because, um, as I said, no one's right here and no one's wrong. There's nothing to justify as far as I'm concerned. So, as I said, feel free to comment down below. We'll have a conversation about it. But don't be sending me PDF files that were written like 15 years ago that try and prove your argument because that's boring. And I do that on Discord all the time where I'm debating with people about things. That's not what this is for. You know, that's not why I set up all of this stuff. I certainly didn't do it for righteousness. Um, it's just not fun. It's just about as simple as I can make it, really. It's just not fun. Some people who live in the area, those are the ones where... I want to hear what you guys think. If you're from the Manchester area, uh, if you've been to the East Lanks Railway and you think it's a good idea or a bad idea, feel free to comment down below. I'm very interested in hearing what you guys have to say about it. Um, anyone else who's had a similar thing happen to them, if your local Heritage Railway has been turned into a... Uh... God, why am I forgetting all my words today? If your local heritage railway has been turned into a, a tram train or um, rapid transit or just conventional rail again, let me know. It has happened somewhere else. I'm sure it has. Oh, the, the West Somerset does do shuttles sometimes on gala days. And I think, the, oh, the Swanage Railway. That's the one I was trying to think of. Where, is it Corfe Castle and the other one that I can't remember the name of? They've been... Um, classified now as national rail stations haven't they for um is it sundays every sunday in summer or something they run trains back and forth uh let me know what you guys think about that now that's a different case because that's not rapid transit first and foremost and it's also special occasions really like sundays bank holidays that kind of thing but i'm really interested in hearing how that's worked because that kind of feeds nicely into this so if it works for special occasions would it then work for everyday usage um and i I, really, I need to go read the proposals again because i can't remember the exact time frame that they said i can't remember if it was like a tram every half an hour or a tram every hour something like that but i can't imagine they would do it just for special events it has to be daily use of some kind but i can't remember when the trams run is it every 15 minutes 20 minutes whatever so if you know that feel free to, to let me know about that as well that'd be really helpful um, I know I'm carving holes through the centre of these towns. I know I'm a hypocrite because I, I don't like doing it, but I do it anyway. But it's a a necessary evil. I know I use that term a lot as well in this series, but I think it's a necessary evil. Of course, when you become the bad guy, you try and justify things to yourself and then you, you kind of lose track of what's right and wrong. I think this is um, needed still. I don't know. That's the thing. Just, I don't know. But Gee Hill Station's going to be on this little plinth thing here. So, maybe, maybe it's fine. I don't know. Uh, and yeah, we're going to double track again here. So, Butt Hill is going to be single track. And then Gee Hill here is going to be double track. I know I'm using the same stations. I'm annoyed actually that the Gerda Bridge isn't available. But then actually, is it in this... I can't remember if it's not available for the track type or if it's not available at all now since I updated my bridge set. That's another thing where having a good memory would serve me well. And I normally do have a good memory. And I don't know why today it's decided to let me down. But there we go. Um, shall I make this... Mm, no, I was going to say, should I make this double track all the way? But I don't think I will. I think here, it'll switch back to single track just before this tunnel. And this tunnel is going to take us nicely over to there. I was going to climb up into the hill a little bit higher, but I think actually this works out quite nicely. 
and then we can connect these up like so. Oh, not with that piece though. There we are. And then scooch on over to this side of the tunnel and just lower the land down like that. And then increase the land height here and here like so. And then we can go down along. There we go. And I think, yeah, we'll run right alongside... Actually, maybe we'll leave a tile gap still. So I could have just left that how it was. There we are. And then we can run... Actually, this needs to be the same height. Makes my life a little bit easier. Oh, I think I've flattened this a bit too much. Whoopsie. But yeah, into uh, Learning Pool Falls. And I think we'll go uh, not like that. We are just going to have to go like this. I can't actually remember how long these stations are. Something like this, isn't it? And then you connect up like that. And then you're the run round loop, even though you don't really get used technically. But we'll stick you in anyway. And then you go there. And then another one. This is based on the design of Hythe Station at the Romney Hythe and Dimchurch Railway. Uh, where it's got like the run round track in the middle and then the two platforms either side. I think that's a really neat design myself. I quite like it. I think it's cool. But yeah, that's that done. I'm just going to go check St. Halter quickly to remind myself of the design. I don't know why I'm saying one syllable at a time like that. Uh, so they've done theirs a little bit differently. They've done theirs. I built this. Why am I saying it like that? I did things differently up here with this design, but it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this other end is going to be a bit shorter because I think it's five, maybe six tiles. Yeah, technically it's five. This is the longer platform, so this one could be the full six or seven. This one here I think is going to be four. And that'll be for the shorter trains. I might even program that into the signals just to make sure. Um... Let's do the signalling first. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know why today. I've got really bad pain in my wrist. It's not very good. It's making it quite hard to use the mouse. I think I need to readjust my seating position in my chair here. Also, what's the gap between the signals? One, two, three, four, five, six. So is this set to seven? I can't actually remember how this works now either. It's been so long. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, cool. Right. You go and come down to this end of things there. Actually, that was dumb. Let's not do that. Let's do same place as this one. There we are. And then you are a path signal like so. You are a path signal like so. You are that kind of path signal, which I don't actually have over here, but that's fine because I have now. And you are going to be changed as well. Technically, I could actually, yeah. Technically, I could just use normal signals for this. And keep it like that. I'm going to do that, thinking about it. Like so. That makes more sense. In fact, this one here, I don't even... Uh, no, I will keep it. I'm really indecisive today as well, have you noticed? Can't make my mind up about anything. Okie dokie. Right. Uh, have I built this too small? I've built this too small. I can fix that. That's no problem. We'll do something like this. So now you are going to go there. You are going to go there. And like that. So that's what? One, two, three, four, five. That's about the right size, I think. Maybe. Same down here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So again, just about the right size. That one, no problem. This one here. gonna do it like this 
and like this one two three four yep that's the right size you go there you go there and then finally through the hill down to the coast and like that I might put something here just to stop trains trying to go in there I don't know if I can do that we'll see as for the stations then so first of all Lenning Pool Falls uh, let me just change how I'm sitting because I'm trying to lean into my microphone and I really don't think I need to do that it's, it's killing my neck you probably didn't hear that because I looked away there we go I've got my neck cushion on now I need to like oh can you imagine if I'm racing in F1 with a neck cushion on I feel like I've got one of those head support things that they, they actually have in real life that'd be so cool that's better ish kind of maybe sort of anyway what station design was this it was British platforms wasn't it uh British station platforms that looks kind of right head back over to Cond head and see for myself might as well start at this end whilst I'm here uh yeah now that does look right should I build another station around here somewhere I think Conthead could have a couple of stations. It's a massive town. And it connects up with Plonford. Maybe. We'll come back to that. First of all, though, down here in uh, Denving Bridge, we're going to add some new stations. So let's build it right up against the edge here. Oh, wow, they actually let me build it. I was fully expecting them to tell me to, to bugger off, but no. Uh, let's go Shelters Outer. Yep, nice. And then some signs, and then another set of drop downs. Actually, that one could go there, and we could extend the shelter like that, and then build signs. This one's going to be six long. It's all benches, have you noticed? I'm not sure I like that. Oh, I need bridges. That's true. Uh, I'll put bridges there. There we go. Okay. So that's that one done. Then we head over here. Uh, and this is where the stations get a little bit smaller. Uh, that name's going to change. We're definitely not keeping that name. Two, three, four, and five. And not all of these need shelters as well, actually. They, they can stand in the rain. That's fine. Benches and plants. Actually, we'll put the sign in the middle. And then we'll put the benches and plants next to that. Like so. So, yeah, that is the right one. Good, good. Uh, names will change as well. We'll come back and do that in a second. Down here to Cartborn. Um, he's got a good name for this station, actually. Also, I could, in fact, extend this by one. Like so. And I can't born itself. I mean, it's not a very good name, is it? It's simple as that, really. Let's come up with a better name. Uh, da -da -da -da. To try an island shelter. Oh, that looks quite good. I'll do a double one of those. And then five. Oh, yeah, I know what I was going to do. Okay, so... Whilst you drop down, you're going to extend one. There we are. And now we can fit the full length trains in to this station. Nice. Bit of an offset. That's cool. Right. Gee Hill uh, is going to go just off this bridge. Sorry. Butt Hill is going to go just off this bridge. Three. Uh, and then the, the, the this one. Four. And then this one. But Hill North, I suppose that's a good name. I mean, it's a terrible name. Awful name town. Citizens of Butt Hill. I cannot apologise enough for you having to live in a stupidly named town. You can imagine there's some history involved there as to why the town's called Butt Hill. I imagine they're the butt of everyone's jokes. Hey, 
bad joke. Um, shelters. So we'll go with some shelter outers. Like so. We might as well double it. Actually, no, we'll put a bridge in the middle. And then we'll put another set of shelters. Because why not? And then you are going to drop down there. You're going to drop down there. And then you're going to have some more benches slash planters. I do need to go back to Cartborn and add in a bridge. Because I forgot to do that. Let's put Cartborn's bridge there. Yeah, that works. Okay. And then finally, down to here, Lenningpool Falls. So I'm going to do one platform first. I'm just going to do it like this. Uh, oh, they don't like me. Hang on. Get my checkbook out. Got to bribe the local authority. Don't get caught. No! Oh, that's very problematic. Um, hang on. I might be able to plant trees for these guys. Yeah. Oh, thank God that worked. Whew. Right. Definitely then get on with this. Oh, hang on. I am a derp. Let's do it with something that you can actually use on multiple tiles, shall we? Learning pool falls. Learning pool falls. There we are. Okay. So, technically, this is going to be its own station, like that. Uh, technically, what was I going to say? I can't actually remember what I was going to say. Oh, I suppose technically these are separate stations. They're not meant to be together. That's why... I imagine there's just a line of trees or something that goes along the middle there. Um, it's meant to be like a walking connection kind of thing. Rather than a full-on connection. That's what I was going to say. And it was going to sound really cool. Uh, and then I completely forgot and butchered it. And yeah, but Cool. Right. We'll put some signs. Uh, actually, no, we won't put signs. We won't put signs. Why do we need to put signs? People's obsessions with signs. Honestly. Uh, but I will keep the shelters going right the way up to the end. And then I will put some signs in. There and there. Cool. Right. We are done with the building. So, first of all, you're just going to be lending pool full buffers. There's literally no reason for these to exist right now. If the, um, the shunting patch is introduced into this patch pack, then maybe you can have trains actually, or locos actually run around their trains, in which case this might have to be extended down a tile. So you can imagine, pulls into station, decouples, runs to there, reverses, through the middle, back to here somewhere, and then pulls back onto the train and heads back in the opposite direction. That'd be cool. Uh, for you, you're just going to be Gee Hill. Uh, you're going to be Butt Hill North. That's fine. I hate the town name, but the station name is okay. Cartborn. Now, this needs to be something... Cut, take Cartborn out of the equation completely. Let's go for something like... Something Waters. Something Lake. Waters always sounds nice. Um, lake Waters. Glassy Waters? Glossy Waters. Glossy Waters sounds good. We'll go with Glossy Waters for now. Leave this off the map. <laughs> That's all I'm saying because it might change. Glossy Waters. Uh, I also actually don't need the station names up on the screen right now. I only did that for last episode and I haven't actually closed the game since. Let's get rid of you. Right. Up to... Slardingbury. Now, this is not going to be called Slardingbury Industrial Park, believe it or not, because that is an absolutely terrible name. Um, We might have an homage to the industries, though, because you've got, was that a lumber mill? Timber yard, coal mine, textile mill, coal mine. So we're, we're closest to the mills, the mill in the yard, so we might just call it Mill Yard. Have that as a station name. And hope that it's not been done before. Yeah, it hasn't. Cool. And that's sliding Bree now connected up. And then finally down here at uh, Denfing Bridge. Um, let's go with 
valley tunnel. So I think with, with heritage routes, you do have some that are named after their towns. Uh, like the entire West Somerset Railway, it's named after all the local communities that it serves. Then you also have some like... Oh, God, trying to think. I actually can't think of any right now. Oh, I mean Smallbrook Junction. I don't think there is a town called Smallbrook on the Isle of Wight. Maybe I've got that wrong. I don't remember there being one. I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, this is the first part of this episode done. This might end up being the entire episode. I haven't decided yet. If it is, then I'll do uh, something in post. Just to let you know that this is the end of the episode. So I'm not going to sign off the video yet. But I'm also not going to say we'll be back in a second for the time lapse. Because um, I'll leave all that for whatever I decide to do in post. Because I've just realised this is a 35 minute long video. So this could end up being the full thing. But yeah, if this is the first of a two-parter. Then next time out, we've got these two towns up here. Uh, Buningville and Invin... In God, in Venningstone on Sea, uh, where the uh, the two other heritage routes will start and end. They're not going to be narrow gauge. They're going to be standard gauge. We're going to have steam locomotives, diesel locomotives, multiple units, everything. You name it, it will be there somewhere uh, up till about 1953. Then uh, we start to encroach upon our supposed modern day uh, traction, and that that becomes a bit confusing then. But yeah, whatever happens, guys, I will talk to you again in just a second. Okay, so having looked at the time, we're about 36, 37 minutes in here. So I'm pretty much going to wrap this episode up here, guys. And we'll come back next time for uh, the second part of the Heritage Movement. And this time, we're going to be working on standard gauge, um, steam, diesel, powered traction. I don't know where I'm going with this sentence, by the way. I, I'm literally just making this up as I go along. I'm very good at doing that sometimes, most of the time, not all the time. Um, but yeah, the Blue Lagoon is now complete. I'm very, very happy with how that's looking. And hopefully in the future, the other lines will look the same too. But until then, guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And of course, if you enjoyed the series, drop some comments down below with ideas for future episodes. Bear in mind, this was a suggestion from a viewer doing Heritage Railways. So um, if you've got any suggestions similar to that, feel free to comment them down below. And they will get used in future videos. Uh, and besides all that, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you guys for your continued support. And until next time, I will see you soon.